What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Craft and Board Tastes. And today we're actually digging into a, another shelf New England style IPA. So if you remember over the course of the last couple of months, I've actually done reviews of big breweries uh, and their interpretation of the New England style IPA. Ones that are easily available, um, easy to find on shelves, uh, and also at a decent price point. So I started off with Sierra Nevada's Hazy Little Thing back in January. I then followed that up with um, Sam Adams in their New England style IPA. And then finally, I did New Belgium's um, uh, Hazy Voodoo Ranger IPA or can't remember exactly the name of that one. It always trips me up. So today we're actually getting into a fourth. Uh, and this is actually out of, uh, or from Long Trail Brewing Company, uh, out of Bridgewater, um, what is it? Bridgewater Junction? I don't know. Bridgewater something, Vermont. <laughs> can't remember the actual name um, of where they're from. But uh, this is Long Trail Brewing Company, and this is their VT IPA. So kind of a cool little can design there. You got like, a, obviously, the Vermont... Um, uh, license plate going on there on the can says Green Mountain Haze, um, and then obviously Vermont on the bottom. So um, if you don't know anything about Long Trail, uh, Long Trail actually um, is kind of considered like the grandfather or you know one of the trailblazers of craft beer in the state of Vermont. So they actually launched or opened in 1989. Um, so they're, they're, they're kind of that area where, you know, a couple of years later, Magic Hat comes along, right? So I think like Long Trail and like Magic Hat are always kind of talked about kind of in the same breath. And it's kind of like one of the, you know, they're the kind of the original kind of craft breweries that opened up in Vermont uh, many, many years before, obviously, Vermont kind of became, you know, one of the meccas of craft beer in the country. All right. So this is their take on a New England style IPA. Um, it's actually brewed with Citra and Amarillo and was coming in at uh, 6% ABV, so kind of super excited to dive into this one, um, and we'll see how she goes. All right, so let's, uh, already got the actual beer into a glass off camera, so let's dig straight into the appearance, obviously, then we'll get the uh, aroma, taste it, and then, of course, then we're going to rate it. All right, so appearance of the beer. It's a New England style IPA, so points to them for that. Obviously, a uh, decent amount of haze going on there, kind of, you know, kind of full-on, kind of opaque. Um, I poured the beer, actually, we got ourselves probably about a half finger to almost a full finger, kind of frothy uh, white head with some nice kind of, um, not compact, but rather kind of like larger size kind of frothy bubbles. Um, it looks exactly as it should for the style. So points to them for actually delivering upon that, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and get ourselves an aroma. Mm, kind of nice. All right. Mm, so big amount of uh, big notes of tangerine. <sighs> Definitely a little bit of mine, uh, mango. Definitely a bit of pineapple as well. So, you know, hitting all those kind of like traditional New England style kind of aroma notes. Yeah, even getting a little bit of kind of a cracker and um, biscuity kind of uh, sweetness um, uh, from those particular malts. So, um, yeah, spot on so far, man. Let's go ahead and give her a taste. Cheers. Hmm. All right. So, again, tangerine, mango, pineapple up front in the taste, so it follows that in the nose. But now... Right about middle of the palate right now, I'm getting a nice kind of little blast of bitterness that's lingering for a little bit. Um, also, with a bit, little dose of kind of grapefruit, even with like, eh, kind of on the back end a little bit, maybe a little bit of pine. It's mostly grapefruit. So, that's really interesting because this definitely has a lot more perceived bitterness than what New England style IPAs of what we've come to know them in the last couple of years, right? So like, you know, juice bumps, right? Where they're just extremely overabundant in terms of um, of um, tropical fruit uh, profile uh, and then zero to no lingering bitterness. That's kind of become like the, the standard for the style, right? This is interesting because, you know, if you go back to kind of some of the original beers that kind of started a bit of the unfiltered slash haze craze in New England... And specifically in Vermont, you know, four or five, maybe even now, uh, six years ago, it's like something like Hetty Topper. Hetty Topper always has, always still does, has a tremendous amount of perceived bitterness. And so this kind of follows in that vein in the sense that, you know, it's not a full-on kind of, uh, you know, hazy juice bomb. Um, it's got that obvious kind of haze New England style look to it. But it's still retaining a bit of that character of maybe some beers that kind of came out of Vermont 
pre-treehouse, pre-trillium time period, right? Obviously, those breweries are not in Vermont, but they're in New England, but, you know, and have kind of become the forebearers of that style. But, yeah, so, like, I would say this kind of leans itself a little bit more towards, you know, Heady Topper than it's going to lead itself, uh, or lean itself a little bit more towards, you know, a Treehouse Trillium or, you know, other breweries across the country that are doing the New England style, like Monkish or Aslan, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, going in for one more taste. Yeah, that's super good. That's really, really tasty. Um, I dig it. I dig it. So let's go ahead and give her a rating. All right. I feel super comfortable with this um, going with a 3.75 caps. If I'm going to compare it to the other shelf New England style IPAs that I have reviewed thus far on the channel, I'd probably put it in this order. I'm going to keep New England, uh, Sam Adams New England style IPA number one. That was still my favorite. I thought that that was the closest representation to what the style has become today. All right. Two, um, I would definitely put the new the new Belgium, the um, Hazy Voodoo Ranger. Definitely put that kind of um, second. Um, and I maybe want to kind of revisit those a little bit. I, I definitely still feel pretty comfortable about putting the Sam Adams number one. But, I, you know, I did really enjoy the new Belgium version. And I have obviously seen a lot of reviews of people doing it lately. And I would like to kind of jump back into it because people kind of flip-flop those. Um, a lot of them most actually feel that new Belgium is a little bit better. So I'm, I'm interested to kind of try those again. Anyway, um, third, definitely going to have to go with Long Trails VT IPA or Vermont IPA. Definitely coming in a solid third. And then obviously fourth is going to be Sierra Nevada's Hazy Little Thing. So that's kind of where it sits, man. Like coming in third out of four. Um, very easily accessible, easy to, 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 to find um, if you live in a state where Long Trail has distribution. And uh, price point's kind of sweet. I think I paid like 10 bucks for the six pack or something like that. So, you know, that's um, not bad, man. No lines, no weights. Not a whole lot of money. Decent little beer here. All right. 3.75 caps for the Craft Board Taste. That'll do it for this episode. I hope you join me again for another episode where I drink, I review, I rate, and then I repeat. Cheers.